Five Runner Hundred Dollars. I'm Erin and this is Wendy. Hi, we are here today to show you how we are redoing our antique table. Um, we are currently at the naked phase because I didn't vlog at the time we started this project. So. <laughs> so I have pictures that I'll insert periodically to show you what I did up till this point. I used stripper to strip out the old finish using these brushes and steel wool. It took a long time. I wasn't vlogging at the time, so I didn't get any footage of that, but I do have pictures. So what we're doing right now is... We are going to start the process uh, into staining the table. To do that, we first have to sand it so it's all even, and then we'll wipe away the residue and start with the wood stain. Alrighty, and then after that, that takes about what, an hour? It takes about an hour to dry hours. completely. spots you'd like to go over with more stain, then you would do that, and it probably wouldn't take a whole nother hour for that little bit to dry. No, probably not. Um, this table has been used naked, so there are going to be quite a few um, blemishes and stuff on it, which is just fine because it is an antique table and we like the character of this table. So, should we get started? Yeah. When you're sanding, you want to go with the grain, like she's doing, because otherwise you'll get scratches across your grain. If you look, there are scratches in the table that have been put there through years and years of use, but um, if you wanted a really super fine look to the table, you could stand past those scratches and get it all smooth in one direction. But for our purposes, we want just uh, a rough kind of character underneath the wood. So we're going to just do a light sand to make sure there's no tag sticking up. Smells lovely. I know, that's why we get to 
and um, you don't necessarily want to scrub it in, but if you can brush it within fairly even strokes um, with the grain, that's always good. Um, sometimes you'll run across a knot hole or something that you're going to have to kind of work work around, and you want to try to not get brush strokes in it if possible because it will sit that way on the table. And mind any drips also because those will set as a drip and it will look like you painted it that way. Looks good. Now that's the same kind you use for the bottom of it, correct? Yes. yes it and just to show you guys, this is basically what the color of the table is going to look like once it's all full, fully dried and everything said and done. So these two will actually match. Hey, our camera guy today is Brandon Nelson, Aaron's boyfriend. Hello. And so we're going to take a look at the table. Not a problem. We just want long strips so you can see the green through it. Looking good, ladies. This table has been through so much. <laughs> My mom got this table when she was a young mother. I was like five, I think, when we got this table. So it's been through me my whole life. My little boy, who's now a grown man, also used this table because we lived with my mom for a while. This one. <laughs> Has, they've all had baths on this table. They've all had diaper changes on this table. Learning how to put their alphabet on this table. So there's a lot of nostalgia with this table. Yes, very much so. Which is good, <laughs> Which is good to refinish it because then it'll have nice and new. But it'll still be the same table. Oh, looking, good. looking real good. This is going to look great once it's finished. Now is this a, a, like one of the last steps or is this just like... This is um, second to the last step really. We're okay. staining. We've already been through the um, sanding process and the stripping of the old varnish which was a big chore because the old varnish from 30 years ago doesn't react well to the chemicals that we use today okay. for whatever reason. Um, they're not friends. <laughs> so. It took me a while, and um, so we finally we we've, we've been using the table like this for six months, eight months, something like that before I started vlogging. Yeah. And um, so it's it's been sitting waiting for good weather. Now it's probably gonna rain today, so that's not gonna be too much of a problem with our finish. I don't think. Because as long as it stays above 68 degrees, we'll be fine. Which is the problem I had with the table before. Because <laughs> it was winter and it was like 40 something degrees, and I think that had a lot to do with why the finish didn't set properly. So, for those who live in more humid areas, do you suggest some better weather day yeah, when doing this? Yeah, dry day probably would work, but in Florida, every day is a humid day. So, <laughs> you just have Fair to make enough. sure it's warm. Um, because the uh, finishing burn, the finishing product, the varnish, the stain, the stain is fine, but the varnish shall lack whatever you use to, to put the shiny protective coat on it. Whatever reason doesn't want to set when it's cold. Okay. So. so for those of you who live in Alaska, good luck. Yeah, you probably had a heated garage. <laughs> <laughs> or just, you know, not for finished furniture. <laughs> One of the two. Paint seems to do better in cold than 
uh, varnish. Because there's no humidity in the present. Looking real good. You just lie. You can come get close to this. You cannot, you cannot paint on a human day. You, will never try. you can see that middle section. That's what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like as of right now. Before. After. Before. <laughs> and after. And you can still see the uh, old character coming through. Um, For those of you who can are observant and can see, you'll see little dings and scratches from the age of the table, but this is what we're going for, correct? Yes, yes. You still want to maintain its integrity without making it look brand, brand new? Yeah, because um, I, I actually bought my mom a brand new table so I could steal hers, <laughs> because she didn't want this big table anymore. And uh, so we made a trip, Aaron and I did. We stole my husband's truck with his permission. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not fun. And uh, do you still have a bunch of stuff in your brooch? Very pretty. So yeah, we, we went up to Arkansas and got this. Packed it in the bed of my husband's truck. And pardon me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, here we are. <laughs> we have this table. I think my husband might have wanted a brand new table. But I, I was... Looking for a table like this, and you can't find a wood table like this anymore unless you're willing to pay three thousand dollars for it. Yeah. So I just need to pay three. And also, there's a lot more sentimental value oh, yeah. with this table than something brand new. Oh. And Miss Wendy finishes it all. <laughs> and she executes it. And there you guys go. <laughs> this is after the initial um, painting on of stain, and now we're gonna let it dry for about an hour. Yep. Give or take. Uh, about an hour, maybe less since it's a really nice hot day. Okay. But you don't want to put varnish on it before an hour is over because it could uh, mix the chemicals and not dry well again. And I don't want to have to do that again. So we're gonna give this a like, good hour before we come back and try to put any uh, varnish on it whatsoever. frosty and you put it on but it will dry clear but you want to make sure you don't get too much thickness in it because it will um, take longer to dry for one and it will um, change the level of your table wood now why are the slats pulled apart oh the slats are pulled apart so the table doesn't glue itself together and I forgot to take them apart when we were putting stain on yesterday. <laughs> so as soon as we got done with the staining part, Erin and I pulled it apart so that it would glue itself together and stay one piece forever and ever. <laughs> you want to try to not overlap any more than you absolutely have to because you could start pulling the stain up actually with the polyurethane, which will cause brush strokes in your All right, our first coat of finish is already done, and we are letting it dry right now. Mom is inside cleaning the brushes, but this is how it looks. Right here actually is already dry. We have ultra fast drying time finish, which is good, especially if you need to get it done quickly because this is your only table, and your family doesn't have anything to eat on right now. So, we're letting that dry and we'll be back with the next coat. Alrighty, this is after one coat of polyurethane. All 
right, just applied the fourth coat of sealer and now letting it dry. Okay, well, our table's done here. It is, and it looks fantastic. It's like a brand new table now. <laughs> so on a scale of one to ten, how hard is it? Um, well, for people like us, it, it's not very difficult, probably around like two or three just because we do this stuff all the time. Yeah. But for people who have never done something like this, I'd say maybe like six or seven? Maybe, yeah. But it's a good project to start on. If you're gonna do one, a table is not bad. Neo approves. <laughs> <laughs> and in order to do something like this, you really have to care about it. That's true. You have to really take time with it. So, all together, Price-wise, this was under our regular budget of $100 per project, so I say we did pretty good. Plus, we have plenty of stuff left over to do the chairs, which are now ugly. <laughs> so, that's another video. Next okay. project. Next project on DIY for under $100.